But before we do that, I'm gonna warp back to the beginning. Whee! Bum, 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 bum. Man, this game has great music. So remember this screen at the beginning, the pole that we climbed up but couldn't do anything with? Well, now we got the grip grab, so we do. We can do it now. We can shimmy, jimmy, ooh, 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 ah, shimmy, jimmy. Climb up again. So we can do this series of grabs. And honestly, you don't need to do this, but I just wanted to show it off. You can take the long way around as well. So this will climb up here, and this, again, it literally just will connect to the main pyramid that we saw earlier. But it also leads to another jam jars hatch that we only need for you know, it's for. The Breagle Blaster! Here's a move that's a load of fun! Now use Kazooie as a handheld gun! Z fires eggs both high and low! Target Zan's temple in you can now go! Finding it tough, huh? Looks like you need some rations! That'll be all! Dismissed! So that's a move that I did not understand at all on my first playthrough. This is a move you can't use wherever you want to, but remember how we entered the temple earlier and it was like, unless you are master the art of bird handling, you can't enter. This is that art of bird handling. There are just, there are just some places in the game where you can't access without that move, and then when you enter that room once you have that move, well, I'll, I'll show you what happens when we go back to the temple. But before we do that, we have this flight pad here, and there's some stuff we need to get with it. Flying controls are a lot better in this, especially with the Beak Bomber. We can actually, like, move easily with it, and it controls way better. We go up here, there's another flight pad, and the green jeep. One out of five. With the flight pad, you can get a lot of stuff in a way that's not intended. Like, you can just fly to the top of Target Zan's temple to get the Jiggy up there. If you do the Beak Bomber, though, and hold down, you can, like, move higher up with it as well. It, the flying controls are just so much better in this, so we could just fly up in there. What the game wants you to do is high jump up here, and then high jump up here, use Grip Grab, and climb up. And bada beep bada boom, we have all three Hollow Honeycomb pieces on this level. At this point, the only things we can get now are two Jiggies that are both inside Target Sand's temple, and we can now access it now that we have the Breakle Blaster move. You're gonna see what happens. This is one of those moves where I'm like, I'm not really sure why this was a move you needed to learn. Like, you, they literally just could have removed the move entirely from the game, and, like, it wouldn't change anything. But I guess they wanted free moves on the first level. Alright, if we go in here, now that we have the Breakle Blaster, instead of just walking in normally... We are now in first-person shooter mode. Yes, Banjo Tooie has first-person shooter sections, which were very widely uh, hyped up, and like half of them are super fun, and half of them really suck. This is one of the ones that's actually pretty fun, though. So you can move around like normal first-person shooters, and left and right C will make you strafe. This is important to know because you actually are genuinely going to need to know that if you want to survive well. And then we can fire eggs rapidly by holding Z. Pretty cool. We can't jump in this mode, we can just move around. Good, I see you have mastered the art of bird handling. I now challenge you to collect the sacred statues and find your prize. Okay. Off to Target Sand's temple. Inside Target Sand's temple. So there's a beehive here if we need to refill on, uh, health. Sign here, we can still read these. Look out for door panels in the walls and press A when standing in front of one to open it. That I wish I knew on my first play for. I, I was like, I don't need signs. And then I'm like, how come I can't find a bunch of stuff in here? It's because I didn't know how to open doors. When in Breagle Blaster sections, activate the aiming sight by holding R. Release the button to deactivate it again, yeah. So if we ever want to, we can hold R and then we can aim like this. Again, that's also very important to know. Releasing R will make us go back to normal. So these statues are lying around this first first person shooter area. We need to find them, collect a bunch of them, and we can get some jiggies. All right. So this is a door panel. It looks a little different. If we press A near it, it'll open up. So the first-person shooter sections are pretty fun. They would be a lot better if they came with maps. 
I just want to say, because some of the first-person shooter sections are really confusing, and I really wish there was a map for them so you wouldn't get lost as easily. Ah, hi, bro. This is a room where it helps to know, A, how to strafe, and B, that you can shoot the jewel between this guy's eyes and deactivate him for a time. Otherwise, you're going to get stunlocked like this. Oh, come on, I hit him. I definitely hit him. Wow, the hitboxes on that are terrible. I literally shot him dead center like two or three times and it did not work. Maybe he was too far away? Yeah, those enemies are annoying. Cowardly mortal, get back in here and challenge me for my prize. Shut up, dude. That is the nice thing about this game. Uh, in Banjo-Kazooie, you had a live system. And when you ran out of uh, HP, you lost a life and got teleported back to the beginning, and it reset all your progress on the level. Not in this. In this, death is basically a slap on the wrist, and you just respawn at the last room you entered. Although it might, it might reset our. Pro I, I, I don't think it reset. No, it doesn't reset our progress here. I still have four of those uh, statues. Let's open this panel instead. Where does this lead? Ooh, this is an interesting room. Aha! <laughs> Take that. Yes, give me the statues. Give them to me. Man, we should have just gone here for the targets and presses relic meeting. First person mode is fun, but like, also kind of not at the same time. Alright, my old nemesis. There we go. Yeah. Deactivate him and you can just grab a bunch of stuff. Not bad, mortal. Ten statues gains you entry to my slightly sacred chamber. Oh boy. I've always wanted to go to Target Zan's slightly sacred chamber. It's like, is that like the room in the tabernacle? But it's, it's not the most holy place, but it's just like the holy place. <laughs> that would, that's still cool to go to. Still a great honor. I think this leads back to the entrance. Yes, it does. Okay, we've been over there. Ooh, grassy area, but there's a fence in the way, and we can't jump in this mode because we're too stupid to jump. We're too stupid to go first-person mode anywhere we want to, and we're too stupid to jump in first-person mode. I don't know why first-person mode is a special move you have to, like, unlock. It should literally just be you enter Target Zan's temple. Oh, hey, we're going first-person mode now. Just because that's the style of things. This is a special power-up. If we grab it, it gives us unlimited eggs for a short time. Go for here, pick up some more statues. We need 20 statues in order to enter uh, to get the second prize. That, I believe... Let's see. Aha, here we need to go. Okay. In here. It's Target Sand's slightly sacred chamber. It looks pretty nice. And there's a Jiggy in here. Boom, bang. Alright, another Jiggy in our pocket. But we still need to collect more statues because there's a second Jiggy we can get in here as well. And that lies beyond that door. It's a good thing I actually got here before I collected 20 of these because I thought this was the slightly sacred chamber and you want to go to the slightly sacred chamber before the really sacred chamber. Okay. <laughs> All right, I hear the Jinjo. I gotta get him. I think he's for this panel, maybe? Or did I literally just go in here? Like I said, kind of confusing layout. Okay, I just went down there. There we go. Most impressive mortal, 20 statues gains you entry to my really sacred chamber. Oh good, that's the most holy place, right? <laughs> I want to go there. <laughs> cool to see. Alright, I think there might still be more statues here, or maybe not? Okay, that we, are, 
We've already been down there. That's a door I haven't opened yet. Yeah. Because I didn't know you could open doors in this, on my first playthrough I only got- I could only get enough statues to go to the slightly sacred chamber. I didn't know there was another option. Okay, that leads back to these rooms. More health back here. That's interesting. I swear I'll find the Jinjo one way or another. Oh man, you are fast when you do that. Is it just behind this door? I swear I've already been back here. Oh, hey, there you are. Alright, that's the one and only white Jinjo in the game. We're lucky we got it so early, because that's getting the white Jinjo is basically just a free Jiggy, because there's only one member of his family. So he'll just give you the Jiggy outright. Whew! I'm grateful for your help! I thought I'd never find my way home! Take this Jiggy for your trouble! So again, we got the Jiggy because we completed the white Jinjo family house, which just has one Jinjo in it. We were very lucky that that Jinjo is in the first world. That's always nice to have. Also, um, that Jiggy doesn't count towards the Mayahen Temple, that counts towards the ILO Hags. All Jinjo-related Jiggies are for the ILO Hags. Alright. Now that that's done, we're ready to go off to the really sacred chamber and get that last Jiggy we're able to get. And we'll have to come back for the tenth Jiggy on a future video when we have the necessary tools to get it. Target Sand's really sacred chamber. Looks the same. Look, Banjo! There's another Jiggy! This is just too easy! Yup! We'll have the game finished in no time! Oh, that's not good. Oh, hi there! Halt, mortal! Thought you'd get another Jiggy that easily, eh? Target Sand, despotic dizzy totem god. I am Target Zan, mighty Mayan god of target shooting. Prepare to meet thy dart ridden doom. So, one really cool thing about Banjo Tui every world has a boss. Unlike in Banjo Kazooie, where there's basically just the final boss. And Target Zan's a really difficult first boss. If you don't know how to strafe, you're in trouble. Alright, so we just have to shoot these targets on him. So the, for the first part, that's pretty easy. There we go. Ah! I can't feel my legs anymore. Get him, you worthless Moggies! Alright, so now the Moggies appear and we need to shoot him down. And now, his next part will... Ah, uh, no. So he's gonna rotate around again, we still need to shoot the targets, but we need to watch out for these heads, which will spook bit darts, and if they do, we need to strafe around them. If you don't know how to strafe, you're basically going to get hit by them. Also, the boss music in this game is always a remix of the world's theme, and it's always an epic, amazing, great. Grant Kirkhope, you are a genius. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, we gotta strafe around. You gotta be far away and strafe, otherwise you will not dodge. Ow! The Moggy spawned on top of me! Are you kidding me? Get out of here. This last part is the toughest, because he's, a, he's basically all heads that spit at you. You can also take shelter behind these uh, stone columns, but that also makes it harder to shoot his targets. There we go, we got him. Doggone it! The Moggy spawned on me again. They're supposed to spawn on the pedestal, not, like, near it. Still another one? Look at that. Not so tough now, eh? No! You've beaten me! Now suffer as I invoke my sacred self-destruct! Three, two, one, get behind a barrier. 
Because he blows up and he spits darts in every direction as he does it. So that will hurt you if you aren't careful. Yeah, even when I knew how to strafe, I still barely survived that fight. That is a legitimately tough first boss. That's also a boss that I, on my first point, where I didn't know he existed until way later. Because again, you need to know how to open the door panels in order to fight him. So I'm just like, oh man, there, there was no boss in the first world. I just fought only a few world's head bosses. No, nope, every world in this game has at least one boss, so... There we go, we have 11 Jiggies now. We got uh, two in the Isle Hags, and then nine in this world. There's, which means our level two tolls are now up to max at everything, except we are missing one Jiggy. The only world in this game that you can get, that you're supposed to be able to get every Jiggy on your first go is the last world. I know a lot of people don't like that because they would rather get all the worlds over with in like one go. This also means if you don't like a specific world in this game, tough luck for you because they're huge. But that's another reason why I love this game so much. Believe it or not, I love every world in this game, which is extremely rare for a 3D platformer. Yes, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking there's at least one world in this game that you think is absolutely terrible. How could I like it? We'll get to that in a future video. But I actually kind of like how we get to, because I like every world, I like how we get to revisit them and find new ways to explore the world. It's, it's really well done. So that's it for this video. We've explored essentially the entire Maya Hem Temple now. We, actually, we have explored basically all of it. We ex all we need left is that one Jiggy that we can't reach, which we will get to later on. I'm not sure if we'll do all, just save all of the backtracking to previous worlds for like a late video, or if I'll just do it gradually as I get the ability to do so. I'll have to think about that. In the meantime, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you're enjoying this series. I know I'm enjoying it a lot. I'll be splitting these uh, recording sessions into multiple videos, so there will be sudden cuts, I think, for some of them. That's okay. I'm not going to explore. I want to get... I basically want to play a bunch of this in one sitting and then split it up later because that just works best for my schedule. Oh, man, this game is so much fun. I love that first world, and honestly, the worlds just get better from here on out, to be perfectly honest. The first world is honestly one of the weakest worlds in the game, but it's a really strong first world because it's so unique, and it's genuinely really fun and a great introduction to what we're going to see for the rest of this game. So I hope you look forward to that for future episodes. Hope you tune in next time. We'll be opening up World 2 and entering it. That's going to be a ton of fun. World 2 is great fun. Look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.